、うん、そう。あれ読みにえっえっえっお願いします。Okay, so before we start stretching and warming up, I would like to propose the idea of the seminar today. Which is、uh, that we are used to doing kokyoho, right? So this is kokyoho for people that practice qigong or tai chi exercises. This is qigong. There are many forms, but they are very similar in, in the intent of the, the practice. But I'm proposing today that we can try to apply every,、uh, every aspect of doing a Qigong in all other movements to do, all other exercises. So, what I'm saying is that this can come a Qigong as well. k o k y o h o So, if you know what you're doing, you can transform anything into a Qigong or k o k y o h o So let's start warming up. And I'll talk a little bit more while we warm up. Relax your shoulders, open your chest. Around. So, how, how do we transform every exercise, every stretch, every warm up, everything into a Qigong? For me, there are three basic things we must、uh, pay attention to. So, first is our body consciousness. So, we must be aware of our body, deeply aware, not just where my hands are, <laughs> really aware of my whole body. Second, we must have intent or focus. So, we must use our, our mind. To focus our attention. Don't let your mind wander about thinking of other things that are not the exercise. And to bring the body and mind together as one, we use breathing, breathing exercise. And shoulders. Very big movement. My UK just arrived. <laughs> Push your legs to the side. We have a strong posture, but still relaxed joints. 
I can move around freely, even though I'm on a strong posture. Hey. Asian culture uh, thinks a little bit different about the body and the mind than we do. They don't separate into body is one thing and mind is the other. They think it's all the same thing. And uh, it's very easy to see when we are angry, for example, our breathing, our breathing is shallow, we start to tense up, and our mind starts to be really narrow, our vision narrow. So the body affects the mind and the mind, and the mind affects the body as well. So it's not two separate things, it's two things that connect with each other. So that's what we're going to try to do today. Let's Next thing. Arms relaxed, let your hips throw your arms around. The shoulders. with a copio hop. So feet shoulder, shoulders wide apart, knees soft, flex, hips down under and to the front. So you can have a, a nice and flat lower back. Shoulders up, back and down. And there they will stay for the whole class. And you can imagine there's a string pulling your head to the ceiling, the crown of your head to the ceiling. So you have this, uh, this tension from dropping the hip and raising the head that's allowing our back to feel a little bit more uh, free to move. So it's not as compressed as it was before. Down and up, and we're stretching our back. Okay, from here, breathe in, out. In, hold, out. And start again. In, out, in, hold, and out. Feel your feet on the ground as if they were glued to the ground. Feel the heaviness of your hips. This exercise is called Fukushin Kokyo. Deep breaths, but don't hold your breath just on the last moment. 
just here, you hold. And their palms together, foot in tamas. Try to shake your whole body using the least effort as possible. Try to relax your body as deeply as possible without losing this good posture you have now. Stop, hold this position, feel your body. So we're going to start with very simple Thai Sabaki. We're going to start with Idimi. 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 We take a step forward, use our back leg. So you can start doing while I talk. Some things you gotta pay attention to. Again in your body. For now, I want you to feel your body have very heavy. So I want you to focus on the heaviness of your hips. So when we take a step forward, you really feel your body is heavy. Step forward, really feel your body heavy. And for that, you might need to relax a little bit your shoulders and your legs. Really feel very heavy, but be careful not to collapse your chest or your head, bring your head to the front. Head still going to the ceiling. So while our hips are going down, our head's going up, but we still need this very heavy feeling in our body. Uh, my weight is 50-50. When I walk, 50% on my front leg and 50 on my back leg. I'm not put my weight on the front leg only. I'm having a, a neutral position. So, Kamai, 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 Kamai. So it's very neutral position. I can go forwards and backwards at will. I'm not committing to a, a big so hopefully hopefully you are feeling your body oh you're bringing this consciousness to your body and you're using your mind to focus on the task. Now we want to use the breathing as well. So every time you take a step, you breathe out. And I'm using my hands here just to, to help me feel my own body and my own breathing. So I'm using my hands here as if I'm squeezing. Take a step. I'm going to Breathe out loudly so you can hear, but keep breathing through the nose. So really have a sensation, not only on your hips, your whole body. And it's as if you are bracing for impact. Not, not tense, relaxed, but Breaking for impact. In my kiddo, we have this kind of techniques. Let me call my uke. Uke is impossible right now. <laughs> so I'll use the wall. So I'm, it's almost as if I want to hit the wall. Oh. So I take a step. 
very strong position. Take a step, very strong position. Have a body, strong position. Use your breath. Okay, I got my UK back. So, <laughs> uh, so we have this kind of techniques in Aikido where we, with, uh, minutes, I'm sorry, we, we bump into our partner. Right? And I, if I do it right, I can take my partner down, down with it. I'm being gentle today because my okay just got the vaccine. <laughs> so, so she's not 100%, so I'm taking care of her. <laughs> but you can, you can picture it, right? If you stumble and we keep the body head and the okay comes down here. Whoa. Okay, so that's enough stepping. Let's do it with a shominu attack. Now I'm not stepping anymore, I'm just striking. I'm not changing my feet, just a shominu strike. Before that, let's, let's do a little bit more walk. <laughs> A little bit more because I, I want to introduce another concept that's really interesting because we are a martial arts so we can't step like an elephant oh, all the time really have we actually must be very agile very fast on our feet right nobody <laughs> practice aikido unless it's uh, beginning like this oh, oh. So we must be very fast on our feet. And to do that, try to feel your feet light. So you feel doing irimi, irimi, but now feel your feet very light. Light, light very light. But you can't lose the heaviness of your hips. <laughs> You join both works. You still feel heavy at the end. Still feel I have body, I have a heavy hip, but a soft fit. If you ever watch uh, painting, watch some painting, they do this a lot, right? Other martial arts, martial arts do as well, but Aikido has a really clear example in uh, Aikido Sensei. Koichi Tohei Sensei. So if you watch old videos of Koichi Tohei, do you see that he jumps? He jumps a lot. So he's here and, oh, and he literally jumps. He loses contact with the ground. And he still does really, really well <laughs> with his Aikido techniques. So you don't need to lose the contact to the ground right now, but this feel very light, very light moving, but very heavy hips. Okay, now we can do Shominut using the same feeling. So it's very precise, very fast. I still light on my feet. And I still heavy on my hips. And my, and my head still going to the ceiling. Right? So let's do a little bit of shominuch, this, with the same feeling. Just be careful, we are doing a very fast movement on the feet, but we can't lose this 
uh, semi at the end of the movement, we can do like this, very close, or forget the back leg. You must keep this, this hole, our body hole, our body intact at the end. So be careful not to bring too close or to forget the leg on the back. Soft knees, soft feet, heavy hips. Let's do irimi and what we call tenkai, tenkai ashi. So tenkai by itself is this movement. It's uh, 100 and 180 degrees turn. So my left leg is in the front. After the turn, my right leg is going to be in the front. Everybody knows this type of movement. We call it tenkai. So, uh, some people call it kaiten. So this move. But we are going to do with uh, irimi. We're going to do irimi tenkai. Irimi tenkai. It's the movement we use for shihonage. Wow. So irimi tenkai. Irimi tenkai. Please do it. Observing all of the things we did before. Light fit. Oh. So we can turn fast. Wow. Heavy hips, so we can cut effectively. If you want, you can do it uh, with a bokken. So heavy cut, heavy hips, light feet. Soft knees, relaxed shoulders. Breathe <laughs> as well. Keep your focus on the breath as well. So, for those who have a partner, we're going to do with a partner. And those who don't, you keep on going the same way we did before. Other side. Go this way. So, as you can see, it's a one single movement. So, when we start uh, learning, we do one, two, three, right? We do step by step. But what I want you to do today is do all of this in one single movement. It's one, and you are facing the back of your partner's head. You are on the back of your partner. And if I turn to you, the partner is already, uh, already has a broken posture, at least a little bit. It's not on his center anymore. I bring him to my center. So for this to, to happen, it must be fast, but we also must have very heavy body. Because I'm using this turn to bring my waist down. It's like a spring, right? So I want to accumulate energy. So this phase, I am compressing the spring. I am accumulating energy so I can later release in the form of a throw. So to accumulate energy, we must wait. 
have it. And as I turn, I hook my uke's neck with my hands, so my hands doesn't go away from my body and bring it with my partner. My hands very close to my body. And as I turn, I hook my uke, and the turning of my body is going to make my uke stop in front of me. So I'm not grabbing my partner's neck and pushing her pulling. I am fixating my arm here and letting my body do the job for me. So it's very important that we turn our hips and sink. You turn and you sink. You are accumulating, you are compressing. Okay, so only this for now, please. And those who don't have a partner, those who have a partner, please uh, keep on going. Those who don't, you can just do as we did before. The movement by itself, or if you want, you can use the joke. <laughs> you can use a stick or a boken or a jaw to make this movement. You can hold it on the, your front hand, make a strike to your head, meet it with your back hand, go to the other side of the stick, and if I'm in front of you, you bring the stick to your shoulder. This, the, the top part of the stick represents my partner's head. I bring my partner's head to my shoulder, so we can later do Irimina again. So bring, take a step, turn, and bring your partner to your shoulder. And the bottom hand is controlling your partner's elbow. So you can stop and then take your balance away from your partner. When you stop, your partner is already unbalanced. Were you able to feel the heaviness of your body, bring your partner down, those who, who practice a partner, were you able to feel it? As, you, as soon as you go in, you hook your partner and you turn, everything goes down. You are compressing the spring and now we are going to release the spring. One, and I'm not gonna throw her. <laughs> Two, and then you you throw your partner. You don't have much space, and I'm going slow. So one to the shoulder, and two. Eliminate. Only two steps. One and two. Really exaggerate this first movement so you can feel your your partner's weight. Really exaggerate. And two. And for those who don't have a partner, please either a stick or your own hands. One and two, it's like a strike. One, two, heavy body, heavy body, compress the spring and then release. Use your breath as well. When we are compressing, we are breathing in. When you're expanding, we are breathing out. Remember, try to do in two, two steps only. One step, you enter and turn. In the second step, you eliminate. You throw your partner. One, two. Go in and turn and cut. This is the, front, the, the first step. And then second step. First, and then 
if we have a bokken, this type of movement will be like this. So we turn and we cut. Right? So that's where our energy is going. This compressed energy is going down, not going to the side, it's not going away from us, it's going straight down. So with my partner, you can see better. I'm not doing this to my uke, all the way to the side. I'm not going to the front, although this exists. That's not what I'm doing right now. I'm simply bringing everything down to my center. To my center and down. To my center and down. And here's my partner. Oh. To my center and down. Here. And it's this is spiral going down. Oh. Kind of like the first movement with it. Oh. Okay, for people that are alone, let's do a uh, uke part. So for uke, we strike shomenuchi. And as we are beginning to Put our weight on our front leg, our partner takes our balance away from us. And then we turn. And if you have the space, and if you want to, you can fall. So, one more time, you cut. Remember, light on your feet, head on your hips, but your partner takes your balance away from us. Before you can settle your body, before you can settle your body, your partner takes your balance away. And then go to your back. And if you want to, you can fall. So one more time. You cut before you can establish yourself, establish your, a good position. Your balance is taken away from you. And then to your back, and you fall. Try to feel the heaviness of your body, and try to feel the lightness on your feet when you attack. It's a sincere attack. You don't know that you are going to. <laughs> I know it's, it's difficult, but you don't know that you are going to be unbalanced at the end of the movement. So you try to be as sincere as possible, as honest as possible on your attack, on your intent. And you go, Whoa! and then you must feel that suddenly your elbow is going to the ground. <laughs> and then your balance is taken and you fall. So try to feel honesty here in the first attack, but don't let your posture set. Before it sets, whoa, you fall to the, to the side. Whoa. It's a hard thing to ask <laughs> for us to do it alone, but it's very interesting because it's going to work on all the, the aspects I talked about before. We're working on our body awareness. We are working on our intent. And please work as well on your breathing. So you attack, breathe in and out. Sure. So I meet her with my front hand, absorb, go to the back. And as I am turning, I am already hooked here. And I go and cut my center. And I take it up and turn my hips. And then I take a step and cut once more. So once again, on the, let's do it like this. Slow, 
to the back. And as I am turning, I am touching. Oh. My partner's head is on my shoulder. My weight is a little bit more on the back leg than it's on the front. A little bit more on the back. And then I turn, extend, take a step, and click. As in Michael, you can work with the, the jaw and keep your chest open, but your shoulders relaxed. So you're going in, very relaxed. And you bring your hand to your shoulder here. So this is my Uke's head to my shoulder. So I can turn, and you see his hand doesn't move too much because my Uke's head is here still. My Uke's head is here, and I extend the top hand, and then I touch. Oh. So this here is representing the Uke's head. So we keep it still. Keep it there a little bit more before you can strike. So this work, this kind of work. You see this hand not moving too much. Not doing like this, very big movement. This hand, it's glued to my chest because this is my Uke's, let me see. This is my Uke's head. So this hand is controlling my Uke's head. So I'm not, going to do this with this hand, because then my uke is too far away for me to do anything. So this hand is glued here. And when I turn, you see, this hand continues this contact here. And the uke head is still here when I turn. So it's not this, both hands away, one hand away. I think you can do a little bit different is when you, and see here, it's great. But look at this, I am on my Uke's back. If I do this, where do I go? I go to my Uke's front and he can strike me again. So if I manage to, it's really, really hard in martial arts to be able to gain this space, the back of our Uke, it's really hard to, to come here. So we need to maintain this advantage. We can throw this advantage away by coming back to the front. So when I'm here, instead of doing penkan and going back where I came from, I'm going to do tenkai or kaiten. I'm going to turn. And my uke is the one that moves, not me. Can you see? It's not I that moves, it's my Okay, wow, that moves. And if you got used to the movement, pay attention to your feet. And if you got used to your feet, pay attention to your hips. If you got used, pay attention to your head. And if you got used to it, pay attention to your breathing. You go on and explore your whole body your focus, your intent. If you want to attack, attack. If you want to turn, turn. You absorb, extend, contract. And if you are alone, you can change between uke and nage. Tori and uke. You don't need to do one or the other, you can do both. And for people that uh, have a uke, you can you have two ways of doing this exact same movement. You can, one, bring your partner really, really, really down. When your partner comes up, oh, you turn. Or you can just take your partner's head to your shoulder oh, and then turn. This is fine as well. So both. Both are correct. Uh, you can try, if you, you're doing one, try to do the other. If you're doing really low, try now to do it 
it's a little bit faster. Your cookie is not going to be balanced, unbalanced too much, but it's enough for you to keep on going. We, we don't need to take the balance away from a partner in one go. We rarely can, uh, in chess, we, we rarely can uh, eat the, the king in one, in one movement. Yeah? We have to take a pawn here, a tower there, right? So we have to eat little by little before we can expose the king, so we can take the king. In Aikido, it's the same. Rarely we can, in one movement, bah, take the balance completely away from our partner. Most of the time, we need to take a little bit of balance away, then a little bit more, then a little bit more, then a little bit more, and so on and so forth, until we can get to the king. So it's the same thing. Try to take a little bit the balance away from our partner and then a little bit more, a little bit more. Stretch a little bit more, relax our body. Take a deep breath in. And if by, the, by any chance you, you think of a question, you can ask at the end. So with our feet, uh, shoulders length apart, we're going to stretch up and go down very slowly, very slowly. And you're going to stop here, parallel to the ground. You can let your weight go to the front of your foot. Hold very strongly. And start to go down and relax slowly, slowly go down, slowly relax. Relax completely. You can balance your body to one side and the other. And go to the center, flex your knees and slowly come up. One more cookie to end. The different one this time. Go up, breathe in, hold. We take our uh, ankles off the ground and we slowly go down with our hands and our ankles. Knees soft and go back to the center. Breathe in, hold, get up and go down and slowly breathe out. In, hold and out. Feel your center. Put it up. Okay. 
Janet, hold this position. Feel your feet on the ground. Knees soft, hips heavy, chest open, shoulders relaxed, head going to the ceiling. So, damn it. Hey, show me it. Hey, hey. どうもありがとうございました。